So this morning, I've just seen a new patient for a consultation. Uh, this is young Anna. Um, and Anna, I could see with the moment she walked through the door, is a classic mouth breather. You can see the venous pooling underneath her eyes. Um, and you can see the open mouth posture, which is contributing to the development of her malocclusion. Uh, Anna, give me a really big smile, big, big smile. Can you see the narrowness of the upper jaw? Um, so what I'm seeing here is the palate not developing properly and as a result the lower jaw tracking behind that giving us what we call an overbite. So where parents get confused is what age should we uh, intervene? So to me when a child has airway problems uh, you want to intervene while the jaw is still growing because if you wait until the classical orthodontic age of 14 you've missed the boat on facial growth. This is a brochure that was put together many years ago by a colleague of mine, Dr. John Mew, and basically explains to parents why we need to do early screening for facial growth problems. And if I show you a young lady from this book, you can almost see a copy of Anna there. So see the open mouth posture, the recessive lower jaw, and look at the end result. How is that achieved? By orthopedics, by developing the upper jaw, by improving the nasal breathing, by encouraging forward growth of the jaw. So uh, I think these brochures are still available. I certainly ordered uh, quite a number back in the day when they were printed. But it's great for me to show a parent what damages could occur if a child continues uh, to mouth breathe. Here's a good example if you look at this young lady, uh, similar sort of age. Um, and you can see three years of not doing anything and the jaw continuing to worsen, uh, the malocclusion worsens. And this is a very good chart for parents to understand. This is a research by Dr. Robert Ricketts and Ricketts showed here um, at what age the face actually stops growing and it's much, much earlier than standing height. And that's another reason why we want to intervene early. So now what I'm going to do is uh, look inside this young lady's uh, mouth to show you the high palate. So put those glasses on so the light doesn't go in your eyes. Got this chair back. And um, can you give me another really big smile? Big smile? Yeah, perfect. Um, so. If we look at the uh, teeth coming through, this is the lateral incisor, tooth number two, and it's struggling for room. The canine, the fang tooth, is stuck right up there. And the reason for that, just put your chin up for a second and open really wide, say big R, uh, is the palate vault. We've got a high palate vault. It's a V shape, right? Now, I really want you to look at the other thing. Look at the tonsils here. Can you say R? Uh, look at the size of those tonsils. It's very important that dentists learn to evaluate tonsil size because the tonsils can also be contributing to poor sleep, to snoring, etc. So when we do our visual exam, we're looking at the palate, uh, we're looking at the mode of breathing, and big R for me, and we look at the back of the tongue. So big R, now poke your tongue forward, and you can see hopefully there how big those tonsils are. So the airway space there is compromised. And we know from uh, many researched uh, papers that have been published in peer-reviewed journals uh, that children who continue to mouth breathe develop a much narrower palate, more crowding, more recessive lower jaw. Our goal as orthodontists is to get in now while the child's still growing to help their breathing, to help their sleep, to help the development of their palate so that in the future we don't need to be as aggressive in extracting teeth unnecessarily, uh, etc. Okay? So thank you very much for your help in that video. Great.